Thanks for coming out and watching the oxymoronic Reddit professional show, where I showcase the best and worst of the internet. Here I comment on brilliant and hilarious comment chains regarding dumb shit on the internet for you to enjoy. Make sure to subscribe, hit the little bell button so that you get notifications every time we come up with a new video. Enjoy this week's show. Life pro tip, if you're ever in a car crash don't tell anyone the accident was your fault even if you think it might be. Do not sign any document unless it's for the police or your insurance agent. This is why you have an insurance company. Let them handle it. The more you say at the scene, the more problems you might cause in your defense later. Be polite, but when it comes to assessing what happened it's best to stay quiet. Take photos of all vehicles involved in the accident scene and help anyone who might be injured, if it is safe to do so. You may think that the crash was 100% your fault and later learn that there were other factors that contributed to the crash that were outside of your control. I live in Michigan where we have no fault insurance so it doesn't matter if the guy who hit you apologizes, your own insurance is paying for the repairs. So in other states do they have to pay for the repair if they are to blame? As in, the insurance company won't pay. If you have liability only insurance and A. You hit someone, your insurance pays for the other vehicle and you pay for your own B. Someone hits you, if they have insurance, their insurance pays your repair. If they have no insurance you pay your own repair. If you have, full coverage, or collision insurance and A. You hit someone, your insurance pays for the other vehicle and your vehicle B. Someone hits you, if they have insurance, their insurance pays your repair, if not you pay for your own repairs. Unless you also have uninsured slash underinsured policies which will pay for your repair if someone who hits you does not have insurance. But don't be an asshole, make sure the other person is okay and actually get in touch with your insurance. Insurance later, police first. But don't be an a This. I hit a woman because she veered into the oncoming traffic lane while I was turning left to go around the people blocking her side of the road. The damage was in the front of my car and the side of her car. I knew immediately fighting it would be an uphill battle even though she totally broke the law and it was completely her fault. She had a witness in her car and I had none. I took a picture of the debris and moved my car, which was limping, over to the side of the road. Before I got out of my car I was 100% resigned to paying my deductible, which isn't a lot anyway, and just dealing with it because it would be my first at fault accident on my record. So my premiums wouldn't go up anyway. I went over because she was leaning out of her car screaming. I asked her if she was okay and she just started berating me. How did you not see me? How did you not see me? She was on speaker with 911 who were asking her to calm down. She had zero concern for my safety even though her recklessness caused the accident. State law lets us exchange info, take pictures, and leave if we want. The cops were taking forever to show up and she was complaining loudly to anyone who would listen. We were in a main neighborhood in a city so a crowd gathered, so I said I was going to do that. So she makes this big production of taking pictures of my vehicle. I'd like to make some things clear about my vehicle. 1. It had to be towed. Obviously had to be towed. There was a tow truck there to tow it. 2. It was obviously fucking totaled. I drive inexpensive cars and the damage was extensive. So if anything, you take pictures of the parts that are damaged. The only reason you take pictures of the parts that are undamaged is if you think that I'm going to damage them and pass that damage off as from the accident which would be pointless when the car is obviously going to be fucking totaled. I go to hand her my insurance. She puts her finger in my face, does not make eye contact, and says, one moment please, and takes pictures of my sides and mirrors. None of which was involved in the accident. She keeps circling the car to take more pictures. It's getting absurd. I go to hand her my insurance again so she can take pictures of shit that actually matters. Again she puts her fucking finger in my face and says, one moment please, without making eye contact. Takes pictures of my tires. Starts taking pictures of the inside of my car. All the while ranting about how the f did I not see her, what am I smoking, etc etc. It was somewhere around the second time she put her finger in my face that my heart was hardened and I thought f it. I am going scorched earth on this bitch. I take more pictures of the debris and pictures of her car. I take a picture of her because she is wearing a full cast slash boot on her right leg slash foot. Sure enough, it goes to arbitration. A few things come to light. 1. Where the debris is in the road and where the damage on her car is 100% back up my story that she veered into oncoming traffic because her side of the road was blocked and she didn't see me turning. 2. In my state it is fucking illegal to drive with a cast slash boot on your right foot. 3. She was Ubering. Her witness was just an Uber passenger who fucked off immediately after the accident and she couldn't contact them. I am determined at no fault, she is determined at 100% fault. In dealing with the actual finances of that more things come to light. 1. She did not own the car. It was a rental from Enterprise. 
2. She did not buy rental insurance because we had to deal with her actual insurer. Now, if she did not pay for the additional coverage from her insurer that she needed to drive as a business that means her insurer is only paying for my damages. Which means she is on the hook to enterprise for the substantially nicer car of theirs that got f***ed up. Also she had one of those cut-rate state minimum insurance companies so they may not even have that option. Again, none of this would have happened if she hadn't been such a f***ing bitch to me. I would have just eaten the $500 and taken it on the chin. I am a lawyer who handles car collision cases. Do not call the other driver's insurance. That is the other driver's job. Have your lawyer initiate contact with them. If you're not hiring a lawyer because you weren't hurt at all, have your own insurance claims representative contact the other driver's insurance. Nothing you say to the other driver's insurance can help. It can only be used to hurt your case. And generally, if you're going to get a lawyer because you were hurt, let the lawyer report it to your own insurance. Your insurance may be working against you depending on the circumstances, your UM slash UIM coverage, and your state's laws. But do not call the other driver's insurance for the love of God. This. It's like talking to a cop anything you say to the rival driver's insurance company can and will be used against you. Leave that up to your own insurance. This isn't entirely true. While it's fair and justifiable that an adjuster will advocate more for the person that's paying them than the person that isn't, the job, at least in my case, is to investigate coverage and liability and make a decision. The only time I ever take a deliberately subjective stance is when it's word vs word and both stories are plausible based on the available evidence, in which case my job is to support my customer, even if I don't necessarily think they're right. I suspect a lot of this depends on the insurance company and even the adjuster. There's a surprising amount of wiggle room for one person to decide liability in an accident. I work in insurance, see name, and this is accurate, but a d move. If you are at fault and say you aren't, aka lie about what happened, if the other person doesn't have full coverage insurance you may have just destroyed their life. I have had claims where people on the fringe, i.e. low income, working, got hit and the other driver's version was the opposite of the other person's. And since person A is poor and driving an old beater, they basically get shafted and now can't get to work and it spirals from there. If you're at fault, just admit it, but feel free to point out if the other driver contributed to the accident by speeding or not swerving slash stopping to avoid you. I also work in claims. I disagree admitting fault. I agree not to lie, don't intentionally f someone over. But don't admit fault. My job is to find the liable party and how liable they are. If you start going about admitting fault and doing things to undermine my ability to defend you then you might as well not have insurance. Insurance is not there to f people. It's supposed to pay for damages. If you're at fault and know you're at fault, ran a stop sign, admit it and move on. Don't be a d**k and try to get out of your responsibility, just because you think you can. Or just so some asshole like you can lie to get them out of it. Exactly. Don't hire a lawyer or an agent to defend you from getting out of paying when you started the whole problem. You're absolutely right that's it's meant to protect people. You can absolutely not admit fault while still telling the truth. If you make a left turn in front of someone, say that. You don't say, it's my fault. You let someone else determine that. Why? Because there are a lot of other variables in determining fault. What color was the light? Were there any obstructions to your view? How fast was the other car going? Were they under the influence? Were they distracted? Were they able to avoid hitting you but didn't? That's why you don't ever say, it was my fault. I'm not taking the side of the company. I couldn't care less about the money paid out of their pockets. I'm trying to protect the person. My job is to determine fault and then pay the other person. It's also to determine how much to pay them. Unless you're in the industry, you have no clue how much fraud is out there. 3 miles per hour bump that causes no damage but the car that was hit wants $15,000 in damages because they hurt their neck from whiplash. Your premiums pay for that fraud because you think I'm being a trying to get out of your responsibility. Initially I wanted to say this can still be a bit scummy and selfish when you know it's your fault. But my first, and only, accident wasn't my fault, I was sideswiped from someone who made an illegal turn and drove through oncoming traffic to hit me. But since when it happened I didn't know where they came from I just assumed I missed a normal driver and it was my fault. Luckily for me, the responding officer was great and the report was damning enough to make the insurance battle really smooth for me. It's good to wait until a while after the accident to get all of the facts, and to not make rash decisions like admitting fault when you're still shaken and on an adrenaline high. This so much. Some kid hit me in a Lake Tahoe parking lot the first night of my vacation in a rental. He was cutting through the light and saw me make a slight left turn. I was going to pull out left for a wide right into a parking spot because the lot was icy. Well it was too icy for his brakes to do anything when he saw me start to pull into the spot and he slammed into my passenger door and several other parked cars. 
he admitted it was his fault but police wouldn't come out. Nothing signed and he told his insurance the next couple days that I hit him. With my passenger door, in a parking lot. All three accidents I've been in the other party has admitted fault immediately. They've all been times when I've been rear-ended by someone else. And there's something to say about honesty, it makes everyone's lives easier. No one gets pissed of with anyone else, and it makes your insurance company's jobs easier too which keeps their costs down and in theory reduces the amount your. To me ops tip is too harsh. There are plenty of accident types where blame is very straightforward. It is very distressing to have someone hit you and then not apologize or accept responsibility. If you plan on being honest to your insurance then be honest to the person you hit. Seriously. The pro tip from the op is more like a scummy tip. Offload significant stress externalities to the other party in order to maybe get a chance of reduced premium from insurance company. If you enjoy this week's effective way to waste time, hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. If you are enjoying the series, leave me a comment below. A special shout out to the content creators. You frickin' rock.